Hi, here in this lecture, I want to create a correlation heat map, also called a, a correlation plot, using the Washington, D.C. violent crime statistics data. All right, so let's take a look at the site where the data was obtained. So I will click on this URL link, Uniform Crime Reporting Statistics. All right, from this site, called Uniform Crime Reporting Statistic or UCR. It's a site of uh, the U.S. Department of Justice. A, we will select the states or the U.S. total. B, we can select uh, the type of uh, crime variable we are interested in or all of them. C, we can select the range of the years that we are interested in or select the you know the latest year and from that we click on get table to obtain the data all right let's get back to our sheet our notebook okay to get started i will import the necessary libraries namely pandas numpy matplotlib.pyplot. plot this will be useful for the title the X and Y label, etc. And also it, it, it provides some charts, but here I will be using Seaborn. I'm using Seaborn library, the heat map inside Seaborn. And finally, for percent mat plot lib in line, basically I'm including it so that it will display the chart without me having to uh, uh, type plt.show. All right. Now let's load in the data. Let's take a quick look at the data. DF.head. I'm gonna list 50 just to show you that I have two states. So what you are looking at is uh, data about two states, Washington, DC, and Florida. Then I have the year the crime was committed. The statistics were collected. So for the murder rate is 33.5 per 100,000 in 2005. The rape is 28.5 per 100,000. Robbery 635.7 per 100,000. And aggravated assault 682.2 per 100,000. All right. In order to create a meaningful heat map, we need to subset the data by state. Why? Because it wouldn't make sense to have a correlation between murder and rape when we don't separate the state. Why? Because we know the murder rate in Washington, D.C. is not the same as in Florida. Likewise, rape and robbery or aggravated assault. Okay? So, for creating a correlation heat map that are meaningful, we need to subset the data. Also, for creating the heat map, I can uh, include only variable of interest. Otherwise, if I have variable that are quantitative or numerical, they will be part of it. Even though I have a social security number or some ID that is uh, not a part, uh, that, that is useless in the sense that providing uh, information to the relationship between the variable, if we don't exclude it, it will be part of the analysis. So keep that in mind. Always restrict the data to the date of interest for the analysis. All right. So the first thing I will do is to drop year. So I will say df.drop. The variable will be year. Then I say axis equal one because it's a column variable. Then in place equal two. Alright, so that it will take immediate effect. So I'll drop that. Then I can define uh, Washington DC. Washington DC is DF, uh, DF uh, state. I think state is capital S. Yeah, state. Equal to washing 
turn this okay all right let's define Florida likewise df df state equal to Florida all right so now what I will do is define the image size all right that's where the matplotlib pyplot comes in so I say plt dot rc params uh, figure dot uh, fig size equal to 10 6 I'm going to use a width of 10 and a height of 6 that would be plenty enough and now from here I can uh, uh, use the heat map so I say SNS heat map all right I'm going to use the data for DC so I say DC dot call call for correlation alright then I will use annotate equal to what it does it will put the correlation uh, inside the cell for the heat map then I need to format the correlation because they are rest the decimals so I could have like 15 decimal places so here I want to restrict it to two decimal places so I can say 0.2 F. If I display the heat map and the two are not sufficient, I can change it to four or five. All right. Then uh, from here I can add a, a title. Always title uh, the chart so that people will understand what they represent. So I say plt dot title. This would be Washington DC. Uh, violent crime correlation uh, map instead of or you can call it heat map or map all right people will know what it is okay so this is how it looks like now the diagonal is the variable being correlated with itself obviously be one so murder is perfectly correlated with murder rape perfectly correlated with rape that makes sense here this basically provide a guideline so as we are going to the lighter side the, we uh, we are going from you know zero to strongly positively correlated and as we are going uh, from to, to the darker the darker means that they are negatively correlated. So you see, the darker it is, the more negatively correlated it is. So if we look at murder and aggravated assault in Washington, D.C., they are positively correlated, and the correlation coefficient is 0.61. Likewise, murder and robbery are positively correlated, and it's 0.53. But murder and rape are negatively correlated, and it's negative 0.56. All right. So likewise, you know, you can read it from here. Same type of information. So aggravated assault and robbery. All right. Aggravated assault and robbery are negative, negatively correlated, and it's negative 0.13 and uh, aggravated assault and rape positively correlated but is weak is 0 0.05 and finally we already talk about murder and aggravated uh, assault which is positively correlated 0.61 so this is called a correlation heat map it allows us to visualize uh, the correlation between a quantitative variable of interest and have a quick understanding of their relation uh, of their magnitude in the data
All right. Thank you.